one more application I want to talk about, um, which is very practical, uh, where open set recognition is quite important, uh, spoof detection in biometrics. Um, we, it turns out we have incomplete knowledge of fabrication materials used for things like creating fingerprint spoofs uh, because attackers are trying to formulate new attacks and we don't know what those are, they're unknowns. Um, and so these same ideas apply to this area as well. Um, there are different known uh, substances out there, um, you know, latex, gelatin, glue, um, etc. Other things from the arts and crafts world that people have used to uh, create, you know, dummy fingerprints, which uh, do a really good job in most cases of fooling sensors, uh, surprisingly well. Um, but, but some are better than others, so attackers are constantly out there, right, trying to improve the quality of their spoofs. Um, you can formulate a really nice spoof detector, which is what we've done, using the WSVM, uh, using its multi-class mode of operation to identify novel materials. Um, if we have a multi-class classifier, it could know that something coming in is gelatin, live skin, latex, or something unknown. Um, and we can also then use it as a binary spoof detector itself, um, adapting uh, the spoof detector model over and over again as we get more samples for things we know about or if we uh, want to build a better model of new things coming in. Uh, so it's detect novel stuff uh, or known stuff and then make a final determination in the second stage of whether or not we're, we're dealing with the spoof. Um, so a WSVM based novel spoof detector um, would do the same training process I described before for the WSVM uh, except here like we know what we're looking for uh, in, within the realm of, of fingerprint spoofs. Um, the detector itself would just be a binary model. Um, class live would be uh, what we're interested in as a positive class and then we're going to reject all of the other negative stuff uh, that's coming in, whether it's known or unknown, um, that may not matter. Um, we did a very large scale experimental assessment, and this is a really nice, I, th I think, kind of uh, proving ground for open set recognition problems. This is a real, it's a real issue, um, it's a tough problem, and there's you know, serious stakes involved uh, because it's security. Uh, so there's a really nice series of fingerprint um, spoof challenges uh, called Live Debt that have been released from year to year. Uh, we looked at Live Debt 2011 and partitioned partition the data set into 1,000 live and 400 spoof images corresponding to two fabrication materials. And then for testing, uh, we partitioned it into two non-overlapping partitions, T1 and T2. Uh, so each one of these consists of 500 live and 500 spoof images. Uh, 200 images are from uh, spoof materials known at training time, and then 300 are from these unknowns. Uh, so there's a whole mix of different materials uh, in the data set. Uh, and so, so this is a really nice way to, to do the style of testing. Um, just a quick observation, um, if you know everything, the results are better than if you don't know some things. And even when using the WSVM in various combinations for training, uh, you know, two known spoof uh, materials, as I mentioned, and then skin, um, the known is always high, or a lower error compared to uh, the novel. Um, but as it turns out, we achieved uh, what are state-of-the-art results for um, this open set spoof detection problem using the WSVM. Uh, before, again, it was just threshold over some standard uh, SVM model coupled with uh, some bag of features uh, isolated by the biometrics community as being useful. Um, the, again, and here, here is that bag of features. Um, some of these are not surprising. LBP, BGP, LPQ, BCIF, uh, GLCM. The really basic hand-tuned features. I know a lot, the community is pivoting now, of course, like every part of computer vision to, to feature learning. Uh, but this work was done uh, before uh, that was rather prevalent. Uh, and so, so depending on your sensor, your, your performance can vary as well. So there's some other effects you have to account for. Um, but what's nice here, again, if you could adapt your spoof detector, once you use the first level WSCM to identify novel things, uh, maybe you can build then another class into the model and do a better job. Uh, so this is basically augmenting the negatives uh, for the second stage spoof detector itself. So it's like no novel, um, and if we're getting new novel things, put that into the negative set uh, for, for the final spoof detector. Uh, and once you're doing this adaptation, you get much lower error results. Uh, the error is reduced by quite a bit in some cases. Um, again, even using uh, what we consider now to be fe uh, weaker feature representations like LPP. Um, you could look at the, the DET curves here, uh, and again, the WSVM with adaptation uh, pushes the error down farther, and that's of course desirable. Um, and then how well could you do if you could imagine you had a perfect um, uh, uh, classifier telling you this is novel or this is known, and then you could keep doing that adaptation. Uh, the error rates could go down pretty far. I think the only limiting factor here is really the feature representation at this point. 
Uh, the WSVM is probably like a good enough algorithm to, to be usable uh, in, in that case. 